4K. Ultra wide. 4K. Ultra wide. 4K. Ultra wide. How do you decide between 4K and ultra wide? Why not both? Yeah, yeah buddy. <laughs> Introducing the LG 5K Ultrawide. Feed your Fiesta. Glasswire allows you to instantly see your current and past network activity, detect malware, and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device. Use offer code Linus to get 25% off at the link below. Historically, there have been mostly two different pixel counts for ultra-wide monitors. 2560 by 1080, which takes your standard 16 by 9 1080p monitor and stretches it by a third, and 3440 by 1440, which does the same thing to a WQHD monitor. Both of them have an aspect ratio of 21 by 9. Except, it's not actually 21 by 9. It's more like 21 and a third by 9, so 64 by 27. But I guess that didn't sound as sexy on the marketing materials. And also, I guess it's easier for people to understand 21 by 9, since most people are pretty familiar with how 16 by 9 looks, so that means that visualizing 21 by 9 isn't as much of a uh, stretch of the imagination as calling it seven by three would have been. Anyway, none of that is the point. All of that stuff pales in comparison to the beast that we've got today. This, ladies and gentlemen, is LG's 34WK95UW. I think the WK is for work, like working it. Because this thing boasts over 11 million pixels that are so close to each other that if you tried to pass your body between them, you would have to go through one cell at a time. It is a lot of pixels. And yet LG still doesn't call this resolution 5K. They call it 5K2K because they already make a 5K monitor, which has 3 million more pixels all in the vertical direction. So IMHO, even though there are 5,000 horizontal pixels here, really this is more like a 4K ultra wide something that we've never seen before. And a true 5K ultra wide should have a resolution of something like 6820 by 2880. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here because 5K 2K is plenty sweet as it is. Its pixel density of 163 pixels per inch is almost exactly the same as a 27 inch 4K monitor, putting it at Apple retina levels from a reasonable viewing distance of 21 inches, which means you will be blown away by the crazy sharp text. Assuming that is that your PC can actually drive this many pixels. So if you're plugging the monitor into the DisplayPort port, man, I wish they had come up with a different name for that, on your 10 series NVIDIA or RX 400 series or newer AMD graphics card, then you are golden. If you're relying on the HDMI 2.0 ports, then you are basically <laughs> SOL. You'll be capped at 3440 by 1440 since even though 3840 by 2160 is available, you can select it, that is a 16 by nine aspect ratio, meaning it is Squishville. So say no to HDMI. As for if you're using the Thunderbolt 3 port, probably on your laptop, that's where things get really interesting because when we reviewed the LG 5K Ultrafine, we learned that while it worked perfectly at full resolution with our 2016 MacBook, we could only get about four and a half of those Ks on a Windows machine. The reason was that the available Thunderbolt 3 chipsets at that time only supported DisplayPort 1.2, which doesn't have nearly enough bandwidth for 5K at 60 Hertz. It only worked on the MacBook because Apple cleverly used the capacity from the chipsets of two side-by-side -side ports to push all those pixels through. But that changed ostensibly in early 2018, when Intel released a new Thunderbolt 3 chipset called Titan Ridge that supports DisplayPort 1.4, which can handle full 5K at 60 Hertz or even 8K at 30 Hertz off of a single port. So, uh, okay, that's great, Linus. How do I know if I have a Titan Ridge? Good question. If you want a one cord solution to connect your laptop to an external display and potentially even charge it at the same time, what you need is both 
a 2018 model laptop that has the new Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3 implementation. You can check with your manufacturer to find that out. And a discrete GPU, since Titan Ridge isn't designed to work with Intel's integrated graphics. And even if you have all that, there's still no guarantee that it will charge your laptop. So if you're a Windows user and a one cable laptop docking feature is a big focus for you, be sure that you've got a compatible machine or you will be disappointed. Oh, and by the way, you can wipe that smug latte mustache smirk off your faces, 2018 MacBook users, because currently Mojave has a bug preventing this monitor from working properly for you too. The good news is that once these little details are ironed out, this thing will not disappoint. Its color accuracy is fantastic. Out of the box, we measured color differences that were on average indistinguishable to the human eye, despite this not being a 10-bit panel, thanks in part to LG's NanoCell tech, which if you're not familiar, works on a similar principle to Quantum Dot, but kind of the opposite. So it filters out all the colors except the intended R, G, and B. And its HDR capabilities are what I would describe as not bad. Now bear in mind that the 34WK95UW only manages a peak brightness of 600 nits, while 1000 nits is required IMO for a true, okay, this makes a really big difference, HDR experience. But at the very least, it does sport the new VESA Display HDR 600 certification, which demands 90% coverage of the DCI-P3 gamut, a threshold that it crosses with ease. The biggest deficiency with this panel, at least on our particular unit, was uniformity though. And it was worst along the left edge and in the corners, which are a little darker than the rest of the display. And you could also make the argument that given the $1,500 price tag, the looks of the monitor are clean, but a little less premium than they could be. With that said though, personally, I'd rather my money went towards a better panel and backlight solution than fancy casing for the most part anyway. So, bottom line, should you buy this monitor? I guess that depends on who you are. If you're a gamer, you're gonna find this thing pretty hard to drive, like, especially in AAA titles, and I would strongly recommend a higher refresh rate, lower resolution alternative. But, if you specifically want large format and very high resolution, the 34WK95UW really is a best of both world solution that does a reasonable job of justifying its $1,500 price tag. So go for it, because the rest of the really big computer displays out there are 4K. And even though they have a lot of pixels, at this kind of size, 4K won't be nearly as sharp as this. And for my part anyway, I prefer the ultra wide aspect ratio. It's kind of like multi-monitor but with no awful bezels. The Mastrop Sennheiser HD6XX headphones are one of Mastrop's all-time best sellers with over 40,000 of their members picking them up to date. Now they have not changed the driver and sound structure compared to the HD650s, meaning you can expect a balanced mid-range and natural sounding bass, but they do come with a detachable six foot cable instead of 10 foot based on community feedback and a 1 8 inch plug that is versatile for everyday use. Also, they include a quarter inch adapter and support from Sennheiser directly. So go check it out at the link in the video description to join the drop and get your own HD6XX headphones. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link below. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts. I shot a lot of videos in this shirt today. It's awkward because I keep telling people to go check out our merch store. You know what? It's fine. Our merch store has cool shirts. They're just not like this one. And you can check out our community forum. That's also linked down there. Definitely join it. It's awesome.